One of the neat things about Linux is that it will allow you to use hardware long beyond what you'd normally be able to use it if you ran something like Windows or Mac. It wasn't too long ago when Windows 11 came out that we learned that Microsoft was going to arbitrarily limit the amount of hardware that Windows would run on. So if you ran something that was just two or three years old, you may not be able to upgrade to Windows 11. Now, since then, they've walked that back a little bit and there have been workarounds and all this stuff. But the point is, is that Microsoft very often limits the amount what hardware their operating system will run on. That's not something that ever really happens on Linux. Even if certain support for certain hardware is pulled out of the kernel, there are still distributions out there running kernels that will allow you to run whatever you want. There are still plenty of distributions out there that will support 32-bit and allow you to use hardware that is 15, maybe even 20 years old. And even beyond older hardware, there are a lot of distributions out there that will allow you to run Linux on systems that just have low amount of resources. One of those distributions is Linux Lite, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. The most recent version of Linux Lite is version 5.8. Now, if you have never heard of Linux Lite before, I wouldn't be surprised because it's not a distribution that a lot of people have ever heard of. It's moderately popular, I would say, but it's not something that is in the mainstream. It's not like Ubuntu or Arch or something like that. I have done a review on it before for the last major version, and what I thought I'd do today is take a look at what's new, and we'll run through a small installation of it so you can actually see what it is. Now, like I said, this is based on Ubuntu, and it has several new features that are really cool. So let's go ahead and jump in with Linux Lite 5.8. So this is the Linux Lite ISO in a virtual box. Now, before we jump into this too far, let me just say that I'm sorry about the big gigantic honking bars around this. I can't get it to go full screen. I'll mess around with the resolution here in a few minutes once we get it installed. But I can't seem to get VirtualBox to go full screen in Manjaro. I don't know why. It just is something that's going wrong. But anyways, you don't care about that. Let's just go ahead and jump in. So this is Linux Lite. And we're going to go ahead and first, before we jump into the new features, go ahead and install it. So we'll do this. Now this appears to be the Ubiquity installer, so we'll go ahead and install this. This is the same installer that you'll get if you just install vanilla Ubuntu. English is fine. That's the right keyboard layout. We don't need to download updates. We'll do that afterwards. And then we'll install the third-party stuff. I usually do it that way. Go ahead and continue. And then install now. And then continue. That's a proper time zone. So we'll go ahead and enter a username. And that's fine. And we'll enter a very complicated password and we'll go ahead and hit continue and it should start installing. So we'll, I will cut the video here and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so that took about four minutes or so. Let's go ahead and hit the restart button. We'll see if the ISO was removed from VirtualBox. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. We'll see how that goes. Looks like it's going to load up just fine, which is good. Okay, now that we've rebooted out of the ISO and into the installed and installed distro we can go ahead and enter our password and then I'm gonna attempt to change the display resolution we'll see if this actually works we should be able to just type in display which we can and then we'll see if we can find 1920 by 1080 here a few moments later and after some fiddling as you can see this is as big as I was able to get it 1920 by 1080 wasn't an option so I could go through and install install guest editions and get the display working properly but it probably still wouldn't work because this virtual box hates me and uh, everything I've ever stood for. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move on. <laughs> I've wasted enough time trying to get that fixed. So let's talk about new features. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and quickly run through the welcome screen. So we've got up install updates, install drivers, set restore point, install language support, and select dark or light themes. So let's go ahead and click on that because we want the dark theme. Okay, so apparently, interestingly enough, the dark theme doesn't actually apply to the welcome screen, but that's not that big of a deal. So let's see, is there a way to go back? So this is just one long screen, but there is a, a home button up here. Okay, that's good. Um, and I will go ahead and run updates. So control alt T does bring up a terminal and we get a stylized bash prompt. I believe this is bash. So if we run NeoFetch, and I happen to know the NeoFetch is actually installed. This is the bash shell, it's 5.17. We have a kernel of 5.4, so this is going to be based on Ubuntu LTS, I believe, if that's the kernel. Uh, and this is XFCE. So this is a very lightweight d desktop environment. 
and XFC has always been known for very low resource usage. Their theme that they've chosen is Adapta, so if you're familiar with Manjaro, that's about the same theme that they use in all of their distros as well. So you'll expect something that looks really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and run updates here. So, so I'm going to do sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade and enter a password. So there are a few updates and we'll let that go. And while that's running, we'll go ahead and go back to the welcome screen. So we have links for online support and other things like the help manual, forums, and so on and so forth. We have ways of contributing. And then we have the install button. Now, here's the thing. I booted into this and saw that that big install now thing was there. And the thing is, is I am installed. Like, this is the actual install distro. The ISO is no longer attached to VirtualBox. So it's installed on a hard drive, yet there's still an install button. So that's kind of annoying and kind of confusing. Because if you re-log re into your system and you still see install now, you'll think, well, did I install it? Or did I just imagine that four minutes and maybe I was delusional through the whole thing? But no, I I'm installed. I checked. So I don't know why the install button is still there. So we're going to go ahead and click that and hit close. Now I'm wondering if the install thing is still here. No, see if there's not like an install Linux light in the menu. So I don't know why that button was still there. So the, the updates are installed now, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and do a reboot here. And then when we come back, we will check and see for memory usage and stuff like that. And then we'll run through the new features. Okay, so we're going to open up a terminal. And I'll zoom in a little bit. So if I do uname dash a we're going to see that kernel again which is 5.4 and then we do free dash m we'll get to see this is running at 528 megs out of the box which is very low compared to almost every other desktop environment in distro that you'll probably find out there now i've seen some run less but 500 is still really good it's about half of what you'd expect from both kde and gnome so this is very good for low-end hardware now that we've checked that, let's go ahead and run through a few of the new features. So we have an updated Papyrus theme. So if we go through and take a look at the applications here, you'll see that it now uses the Papyrus uh, Adapta a theme, I believe is what this is called. I don't know what these looked like before, but the Papyrus theme has always been really good. We also have several new wallpapers. So. Yeah, this is one of the new wallpapers, and then this is one of the new wallpapers here. And this is one of the new wallpapers here. And uh, it doesn't, I don't know what the other nine are, but probably the rest of these around here as well. And well, so that it has some really nice wallpapers. They also have some Linux Lite themed wallpapers that have the logo in them as well. So those are probably the ones that use by default. So we can close that. This is also the first version of Linux Lite that comes in NeoFetch installed. So we've already run this, which I highly appreciate them installing by default because it means I don't have to go through and install it before I can show you guys the screen. So that's nice. Now, we also apparently have a brand new widget. And the interesting thing is that they don't enable it by default. So usually when distros have conkeys, they've gone through and they just put it on the dis the desktop no matter what. And you have to turn it off if you don't like it. So we're just going to go ahead and enable that. And this is what their conky looks like. I'm going to go ahead and move my face out of the way so you can actually... Oops, wrong button. Hello. Anyways, this is what their Linux Lite widget looks like. This is based on conky. So it has CPU usage, total memory used, logged in as your username firewall status disabled, and then update status. So it says your system was recently updated. I wish I had the actual date there when it was updated. That'd be cool. But anyways, that is conky. Now, like all conkeys, you can't actually move that around easily. Sometimes there's a key binding to do it. I know MX Linux has a key binding to do it, but this doesn't appear to. Uh, but you could all go, always go through and uh, change the conky configuration file if you wanted to change the location of that as well. Another thing that they've included in this release is something called Mint Stick. Although, if you search for Mint Stick in the menu, you won't get this at the top. It'll actually be at the bottom. But basically, what this is, is a USB image writer. So, if you wanted to burn an ISO to a USB stick, this is going to be your tool that you'll have installed by default if you don't want to install something like Etcher or something like that. So, we can close this. Other minor tweaks include an updated help manual, which, is, which we can actually see here. Yes, thank you, Firefox. Go away. Here we go. So this is what their help manual looks like. You can go through and learn pretty much everything you want to do 
right here. Now, one of the things I've always liked about Linux Lite is that they do a fantastic job with, uh, with documentation. They always have. And you can really tell that they are pointing this towards new users and allowing them to find out stuff on their own about their operating system by creating a basic manual for them to use. So that that's pretty much it in terms of actual new features. So let's just go ahead and take a small look at all the applications that they have here. Most of this stuff is going to be your run-of-the-mill XFC style stuff, the same kind of stuff that comes with pretty much every XFC and Ubuntu based distro. So we got GNOME Discs. We have probably a graphical interface for UFW, a font manual, help manual, a high DPI setting. So if you have a high DPI monitor, which is really nice to have that here. We have uh, GIMP installed by default. Install drivers, keyboard. Most of this stuff is going to be for XFC settings. So this is a light desktop. It'll allow you to go through and enable, enable or disable the icons here along the side. And a lot of this stuff is going to be in the control panel as well. So they're calling this the control panel. Usually, if you're using XFC, you're just going to see this called the settings manager or XFC settings. It, uh, it does have all the Linux Lite tools that they've developed. So, for example, the things we just saw, like the Lite desktop, we have the Lite info, which, which will usually give all the information about your computer, but this is a virtual machine, so it's not going to actually work. Lite network shares. So I'm assuming this is probably, yep, this is Samba. We can go ahead and quit that. I don't need to set that up. But that's nice that that's there. Light software. This is going to be the software store. So what is this actually? Would you like to update your software sources now? So that's probably running uh, apt update. So we're going to install software. And this is their little software store. Now you can go through and install things like Audacity and Dropbox and all this stuff. There is quite a bit here, but it's not the most extensive quote unquote store that you'll ever see. It doesn't seem to limit itself to just open source software because we have Chrome here as well. So it looks like it's trying to hit the high points. So things like Play on Linux, Steam is here, Skype is here, Spotify, things like that. The, the most popular applications seem to be here, including Microsoft Edge. So for those people who like Edge could also install that. So this isn't obviously all of the software that you can install. You could pretty much install anything you want using apt or install something like Snap or Flatpak, but if you want a GUI application for installing software, this is what you got. So go ahead and go here, and we can quit that. And you can also apparently use that to remove software. Uh, the, they have the Light User Manager, Light Upgrade's gonna be done for upgrading packages. Light Tweaks, wonder what this is for. So this is a like a multi-purpose tool that will allow you to go through and run certain tasks. So for example, it will do a boot up fix, which I'd assume probably would run uh, something to help fix grub. There's a clear memory preference here. There's clearing a whole bunch of different caches. Yeah, you know, there's a uh, an option to remove old kernels, an option to install a new kernel, changing the host name, finding very large files, save session, uh, numlock, and stuff like that. So this tool looks like it's for more advanced users. Most new users are probably never going to get into this. But if you want something to go through and uh, find an advanced tool, the Light Tweaks application looks like it's something that you'd be interested in doing. So let's we'll go ahead and hit quit there. And it looks like you actually, before we do that, it looks like you can go through and select multiple things and you could do multiple of these tasks at a time and then hit begin. So we'll just quit that. So that's Linux Lite very quickly. It is a very good Linux distribution based on Ubuntu that is meant for lower end computers or older computers that aren't, they don't have a lot of resources to run. And I like that about it. I don't think that it's flashy. It doesn't have a ton of tools. It has a few, but it doesn't have a lot. It, it They've done a good job of making it pretty so that you can, because a lot of the distributions that are really meant for older and hardware are kind of but ugly out of the box. Like you can obviously go through and tweak them so they look better. But in my opinion, a lot of the older ones tend to, emulate Windows 98 a lot of the time, and it's not anything that looks all that great. With this, it looks really nice. So if we actually go back to this just real quick, like we open up, we didn't actually open up, go through and open up any applications. Like this theme is very nice looking. There's nothing to complain about here. It looks very nice. And that's not something that is often something you can say about a, a distribution that is meant to run on low-end hardware. A lot of the times, those don't look all that great. Add on top of this that this is Ubuntu, and it gives you an access to an, a lot of software. Also, it is based on the LTS, so you're going to go through and find that this is a very stable distribution, which is something that most people who run Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based Ubuntu distros really want. 
So that is Linux Lite 5.8. It's one of those distributions that every time it comes out, I was like, oh yeah, that's really good. I'm glad that exists. It's not necessarily for me because I don't really need a low resource distro. But for those of you who do, you should definitely check it out. If you have comments on Linux Lite, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A. Devon, Patrick L. Primus, Marcus Meglin, Jack Snipe Tool, Steve Ace, Abergill Linux, Eric, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, E. Merrick, Camp, Joshua, J. Dog, Peter, Rick, Crucible, Dark Bandit, Six, and Vlad A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.